want to know about range. Tell me about range. Is it the fatal flaw? Is it the Achilles heel? Is it going to destroy the Cybertruck and all other electric trucks? I say it's way overblown and it's clickbaity. And when you actually get into the numbers and you look at the reality of it, the Cybertruck is going to be an extremely capable vehicle when it comes to how most people are going to use it. And I'm going to explain what we know about it, some of the science behind predicting the range, and then I'm actually going to, I'm going to share with you how that's going to apply in the real world. So before we go on, remember, if you want to support the channel, the best thing you can do is subscribe and hit that notification bell. So what we're going to do, this is going to be a little different in that I'm doing the introduction here, but then I'm actually going to do go through some slides because I had to put a lot of information gather a lot of information together. The best way for me to do that is to actually go through some slides and narrate that. So we're going to jump over to there right now. Okay, guys. I think the Cybertruck towing range is probably one of the most problematic areas that exists in terms of speculations about the Cybertruck. And one of the challenges I have is that there have been some videos like this one that have gotten a lot of views and I think that they have misrepresented the Cybertruck's towing ability because of two things. First thing is the only thing we've had to test it with is the Model X. And the second thing is they haven't done a good job of extrapolating the data from the Model X into the framework of the cyber truck so i think we're going to start with this video because it has the most views and it says this all the trucks have this achilles heel and is it does it is it a fatal flaw so i think it just starts out with a real negative framing and i found that with a lot of these videos that there's real negative framing around this so i'm going to try and change the framing because i think they're missing a lot of things, again, because a lot of people doing these, they don't tow a lot, and they're looking at it kind of on these outlier cases, and they're not looking at it, how do real people use towing with their trucks, mostly. A Model X, Tesla Model X, to this trailer that weighed about 4,500 pounds. Now, what was really good about that is that they actually got some really good data. So most important thing to think about here is this kilowatt hours used. That's a good way for us to understand what the difference in range is based on towing. So empty, just with the vehicle itself, they did this 65 mile loop and they used 19.3 kilowatt hours. And then when they had a trailer, they did the same loop and they had 52.6 kilowatt hours of use. So basically, the range fell, or the, the energy use increased, depending on how you want to say that, the range dropped by about 62% or so. So it had about 38% of the range that it would have had when it was empty, when it was actually pulling this trailer. So when we do the math on that, this is what their data tells us. So again, they use about 19 kilowatt hours empty, 53 when loaded. That was for 67 miles. If we do the math, it comes to be 29 and 79. So if we said, okay, if we could operate at 85% efficiency, this is about the, if we went from fully charged to empty, we could expect to get about 108 miles running about 85% efficiency. So it never runs at 100% efficiency. There's always inefficiencies with the power delivery. This is a seems to be a, a good best case number that you can use is 85%. So that gives us our baseline using the Model X, which is a 5,000 pound vehicle with a 4,500 pound trailer. Now this, this was done by Ben, ben Solins over at Teslanomics. And I like this video because he uses a much lighter trailer. And a lot of people will actually tow this kind of thing 
Um, I myself, when I tow my motorcycle, it weighs about the same thing as this trailer, this little mini camping trailer. I like this because it kind of gives us a, uh, the most optimistic view. So even, even though you're only towing one fifth of the weight, you, you still are losing 40% of the range. So in a best case scenario, you're probably looking at a range loss of 35 to 40%, even with a light load whenever you're towing. And then in sort of, if you're maxing out your tow rig, you're probably looking at something like 30 to 35% of the original range. Um, I'm oversimplifying, but I'm trying to give you rules of thumb here. I think the best video, and this is like the video with the second most views, is the engineering explained video. I really like this for two reasons. Number one, he goes through the math of explaining why these things exist. And number two, I was able to use his math to check the other data that we had, and I found out they were really close. So it really gives us a practical baseline for extrapolating what the Cybertruck can do. I think his, I think his opinions about the Cybertruck are off, and I'll explain that why, but it's not because of the math. So he started out by saying, here's what we know using the Model X. So he ended up doing something that was kind of similar, a trailer weight. He used 5,000 pounds instead of 4,500. But he, he, had, uh, he took all the variables and he ended up calculating that if you did this on a 1% grade for 100 miles, you ended up at a mile, you know, kind of in the foothills of the Rockies, that you, and you were driving at 75 miles an hour, you would use 100.4 kilowatt hours going 75 miles an hour on, on that fictional incline. If you went 60 miles an hour, you could get that down to 84 uh, watt, kilowatt hours. So remember, this is a 100 kilowatt battery, so this is basically impossible. 85% efficiency is probably about the best you can hope for. So this would be, this is almost impossible because you didn't basically have to start at 100% and literally run it down to like 1%. So then what he did is he said, okay, let's take that scenario and do it on level ground. And then let's take that and do it when you're actually descending. So I, that was really important because then I could go, okay, this is sort of a range. Now let's assume... We take that range and we assume you're going to have equal parts uphill level and downhill. And that gives us an average of 80 kilowatt hours to go 100 miles with a 5,000 pound trailer. Now, I don't know if you remember, but in that first slide, the, the uh, fast lane, the TFL guys, they did it in 79, mile, 79 kilowatt hours. And, and I came up with 108 miles. So what's great about this is this data and the TFL guy's real life data is really, really close together. So I think that's great. That gives us a really good perspective. So what we can infer from this is that our on level ground, it's about 24% less kilowatt hours used than uphill. And on downhill, it's about 45% less kilowatt hours used than when going uphill. So Let's look at what he said for Cybertruck. So he used the same first example. What, what kind of bums me out is he didn't do the other examples with the Cybertruck. Would have been nice. I had to extrapolate. But he did give us this with the three-motor Cybertruck. Now, he assumed a 200-kilowatt-hour battery. And he assumed a weight of 6,000 pounds and a towing trailer of 14,000 pounds. And he came up with... 170 kilowatt hours on that fictional 100 mile hill. Um, so that is right at 85% of a 200 kilowatt hour battery. So unlike the, unlike the Model X where it was essentially impossible to get there, this actually theoretically could get there. The three motor Cybertruck, but again, notice this 14,000 pound trailer. That's a big deal. So I'm going to, um, we're going to talk a little bit about that when we go further on. But we have some math. We've, 
we we know the math works because it's been it got back tested verified through the TFL guys. So the real world numbers and the the lab numbers are converging. So we have really good data that we can start working from. So we know that this tells us this: if we're if we're going to be going uphill that and we use 170 kilowatt hours in that 100 mile range and then we use the same modifiers for level and downhill and then we average those together that gives us for a hundred mile average trip using about 131 kilowatt hours with that 14,000 pound trailer that means if we're running at 85 percent efficiency now we can go 130 miles not horrible not great but not horrible okay so the first question is is the 200 kilowatt hour battery actually correct this is all speculation right now but the guys over at inside evs which they seem to know their math and again this is outside of my capacity but it strikes me as being more accurate they're expecting it to have the tri-motor to have a 250 kilowatt hour battery pack. So let's go back and let's actually take that 250 kilowatt hour battery pack and run it through the same numbers because now we have 20% more energy. So what does that give us when we do it? Well, now we're able to tow a 14,000 pound trailer 162 miles on average if we have average terrain. Wait, okay, this is why I wished he would have not used 14,000 pounds because I want to I wanna give you some perspective. If you haven't towed a lot before, you won't have a good perspective about what, what can you expect your towing rig to weigh. So I want to use something here that we're all familiar with, um, these Airstream campers, right? So on one hand, we're going to look at the largest Airstream camper. It's 31 feet long. And then we're going to look at this little base camp camper. So the big guy, 31 feet long, this is their monster trailer, has a maximum weight. So it's the trailer comes from the factory at about 7,800 pounds. Then once you fill it up with water and gear and all your personal stuff, you're looking at 10,000 pounds. I don't actually know how much people put into their RVs. I don't know all the what it can store as far as water and propane, but my guess is it's hard to get it past 10,000 pounds. Now, if we look at the littler guy, their max weight is 3,500 pounds, and that that trailer is about 2,600 because you can put 915 pounds of propane water and gear in it and still be under that 3,500 pounds. So now let's take a look at a more realistic. What is a realistic upper range for most people? Most people are not going to be towing much more than 10,000 pounds. If you're over 10,000 pounds, you have a monster like a fifth wheel type camper or a really big toy hauler with a with some with a, you know, side by side UTV inside of it. It's it's a lot of weight. Most people are not at that high of weight and boats aren't even in the i mean i don't know what you have to get to a ten thousand pound boat it's a big freaking boat but you're not it's not a bass boat or it's not a water skiing boat my guess is those are three to five thousand pounds so when you're towing at ten thousand pounds look what happens here with a 250 kilowatt battery now we're looking at a range of 203 miles so here's the big thing you need to think about when these, when people like to pick apart the towing range, they're, they're not focused on how most people actually tow. Most people aren't towing large loads, long distances frequently. Most people aren't doing that. Most people are towing either commercially, they're just towing in town, or recreational, most people tow recreationally uh, within 200 miles. So I've lived in three different places in truck land. I've lived in central Wisconsin, lived in Spokane, Washington. Now I live in Kansas City. 
the recreational playgrounds where people go on the weekend are almost always, I don't know of any, any place I ever lived, they weren't, they weren't more than 150 miles away. It's just simple math. You don't want to spend, you, you're, you, you leave early on Friday, you don't want to spend five hours driving to, to, to your camp spot. Occasionally you might, but most of the times you don't. Or to your fishing spot or water skiing spot or in the mountains to your trail riding spot. In most cases, you're driving two or three hours from your home base. And most of the time, you're not towing 10,000 pounds. Most of the time, you're going to be towing 3,000 to 6,000, 8,000 pounds most of the time. So the problem is that I can find examples where the Cybertruck is going to suck, but most of the time the Cybertruck is going to be awesome. So let me show you what this looks like visually. What I did up here is I put, so the blue is the single and the double motor and the tri is, uh, this is, and the tri is green. So here's our base mileage assumptions. Here's sort of what I think is going to be the worst case basis. If you're towing at the edge of what your vehicle can handle. So, you know, 7,500, 9,000, 14,000 pounds. And, and also maybe more uphill than downhill or real twisty. So you can't maintain good speeds. I think this is what you're looking at on the high side. If you're towing relatively light loads, if, if it's easy to moderate your speed, if, uh, if it's not super, if you're not going uphill the whole way, this is probably the upper end upper range of what you can expect. So if we look at this and we start modeling it out based on how far are you driving in a day and how often are you doing that? I think you're going to find that I'll bet 60% of towing happens in this blue area. I'll bet 50% of towing is commercial daily commercial towing. Now I don't have numbers on this, but I just know how many vehicles that tow are doing so in town versus how many of them are doing them on the highway. And it's a fraction. I mean, every contractor like us, every concrete, landscape, asphalt, roofer, they're all towing, but they're all towing 30 or 40 or 50 miles a day, generally speaking. And recreational towing, again, like I said, most of the time you're not wanting to drive more than three hours to go to your recreational spot. You're in this, you're, this is your weekend ATV, boating, camping. This is where that happens. And maybe once or twice a year, you're going to be up around this range. And so the question you have to ask if you have a single or tri motor or single or dual motor is, okay, am I willing to deal with that for the other, for the trade-offs? But keep in mind, it's going it, to, the tow experience is going to be far superior than towing with a gas vehicle. So what does that mean? Well, in terms of comparing it to internal combustion, this is what I think you're looking at. This is where the gas, this is where gas competes primarily. Primarily competes on people that are towing not more than every other week. I don't know anybody that goes that boats, that rides ATVs, that camps, that that goes more than twice a month. I don't know anyone. Now, I know there's like old people that are retired that like camp full time, but even they're not moving every day. Most of them go somewhere, they camp there for a week or three or four or five days. This is where you're looking at for half ton gas trucks. And you can see, I think there is a very small spot, people that regularly tow more than 480 miles in a day. Okay, if you are one of those people that do this, you're not, first of all, you're not the kind of person that's going to have the patience to charge. You're one of those people that like is a slave driver when you, when you travel and your goal is to get as many miles as possible. Okay, then yeah, you're going to get a gas vehicle. It's going to be miserable. It's not going to, it's not going to 
travel those distances because if you're going 500 miles in a day that probably means you're going you're either in in the states either you're headed towards the smoky mountains or you're headed towards the rocky mountains and you and you're going to be going 45 miles an hour up those up and down those mountains with your vehicle if you're towing more than 5,000 pounds um so it's gonna suck but you're gonna be able to do it that's true you rare narrow case of people stick to your gas vehicle everywhere else i think the cyber truck is going to kick the ever-loving snot out of gas vehicles it's going to dominate them because this is where i think most towing is happening and when you tow down to the lake you're going to be able to tow going 75 miles an hour without getting yanked around it, you're going to be able to hook up fast you're going to be able to detach fast and then you're going to be able to use your vehicle to go off-roading if you want to do it it's going to be awesome way better than the half ton truck now once you get over here where you're towing longer ranges or you're towing more often now i would say this range right here you can use a gas vehicle if you don't want to if you don't want to get more than a hundred thousand miles out of it you're going to beat the crap out of your gas vehicle every guy i see that uses a half ton to tow kind of in this range they just beat the shit out of their truck because it they're not designed for it the transmissions aren't built for it the engines aren't built for it they just wear it out so you can do it but you're going to destroy your truck if you want to do it well you're going to upgrade to a three-quarter ton you can do three-quarter ton gas if you're down here they're okay that we have almost all gas for our fleet so you don't have to get diesel here but you do want a three-quarter ton truck and then if you're getting up into here you're going to want diesel so keep in mind go from a half ton gas to a three-quarter ton diesel you're looking at a twenty thousand dollar jump to get if you if your half ton gas vehicle is forty thousand which is kind of a standard that's like not even a luxury one that would be like a ford F-150 XLT four-wheel drive crew cab is probably going to be 42,000. 40, yeah, 42,000, 44,000. That'd be my guess. Okay, maybe you can get a 38,000 now that the economy's in a recession. But you know, 20 grand. Move over here, 20 grand. Move to a three-quarter ton gas, 10 grand. Easily 10 grand, 12 grand. That's That's what it costs you to jump. From trim level to trim level, same trim level, it's 20 grand to go to a three quarter ton diesel. So you start here at 40, you're at, now you're at 60. You start here at 45, you're at 65. You're at a tri motor. You, if your towing is out here, you, especially in this range, you're either going to get a diesel, three quarter ton diesel, or a tri motor. That's the way it is. I mean, that's just how it is, especially if you're towing more than 8,000 pounds, 10,000 pounds, for sure. You're going to be you're going to want one of these two things so what does that mean that means this 80 percent of tow vehicles this is what they do this is the range they live in down here 80 percent 20 percent of tow vehicles are out here this is mostly this would be people that are so this is someone that is regularly towing a 10,000 pound trailer 300 miles a day if you're a hot, if you're transporting RVs, you're transport. If you're doing anything commercially where you're driving more than 150 miles, when you're towing more than 150 miles a day, you're probably going to want a diesel truck. Um, maybe 200. Well, where where is my break even? 160 miles. Yeah, that's probably about right. If you're towing more than that, the Cybertruck tri motor, you're probably going to have to. You're going to be in a lot of cases where you got to charge. In the middle of the day especially if you start edging up in this in this range here so i could see that being a diesel but keep in mind that is a very 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 small number of people so same thing if you're a full-time rver and you want to pull that 35 foot fifth wheel that weighs 14,000 pounds you're probably going to want a diesel if you're traveling long if you're going 600 miles at a, at a whack you're probably going to want a three-quarter ton diesel there's very few of you, but there you're probably going to want an internal combustion engine. So this is my whole point. 80% of the tow vehicles live in this range where the Cybertruck is going to be way better. So lastly, I want to talk some about cost. 
So if you tow, like most people, you're going to be one of two cases. You're going to be towing commercially. So that means you're using your vehicle every day to tow something. And so that means you're charging overnight at should be probably 10 to 15 cents per kilowatt hour. If you're a regular person and you're towing, like I said, most of the time, you're probably towing 160 to 250 miles. That's where you're towing. In most cases, I hardly know anyone that has a boat, a camper, or rides dirt bikes that doesn't camp with power. Because you, some people do, but most people don't. Most people camp with power because they want they want to hook up to the power. They want the air conditioner. They want the shower. They want that stuff. So most of the time you're driving somewhere where you can hook up with as part of your camping. That electricity is included in the cost of your, your camping fee. It's basically free. So you fill up at home, call it at 12 cents an hour, and you drive. If you can drive there without recharging, you drive there, you get fully charged, you come back, your average per kilowatt hour cost is going to be like six cents per kilowatt hour. If you have to stop at a supercharger, your average cost, you know, if you got to stop each way for a supercharger, now your average cost is probably going to be like 12 cents per kilowatt hour. So in most cases, you're going to be looking at something close to that 12, 13 cents per kilowatt hour. It's the same thing with hotels now offering destination charges. In a lot of cases, you're going to either be able to get very cheap or free electricity when you're overnight, your overnight part of your journey. Okay, I am going to assume 250 a gallon. I realize that with what's going on in the world with uh, um, the pandemic, that gas prices have come way down. It's kind of like what happened in the recession. It took about a year, but they went back up. They're going to have to go back up because, well, for I'm not going to get into why, but they're going to have to go back up. It's not sustainable for them to be like in Kansas City. It's like a buck seventy a gallon right now. Okay, so I'm going to use that because I think that's that's kind of the long term sustainability. That's where oil needs to be in order for them to keep functioning. And I know we're all expecting oil prices to. Or, or the demand for oil to keep falling. But I think what will generally happen is they'll just keep, they'll still, the, the price per gallon of gas is still going to stay in that two to 250 range for the Midwest. I know it's more expensive out in California. I'm, I'm going, I'm basing this on truck land. So using 250 a gallon, we're looking at 21 cents per mile with a 5,000 pound trailer. Okay, so if we assume watts per mile, is 800 watts per mile for the Model X. We're going to use the Model X here because I, I don't. The math is going to be similar for the Cybertruck. So that means if we're paying just supercharger rates, 27 cents per kilowatt hour, we're close to even. Okay, if we're getting some of our mileage, some of our charges are from destination chargers, from our campground, or from our house. That number could will probably be not higher than 18 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, if we only need to use, and this is, I can't imagine where this is the case. Oh, well, the, I don't know where this is the case. This is the case if you're towing in town. So if you're towing in town commercially, you're looking at this. You're going to charge up every night and tow during the day. So check this out. You're going to be at less than half of gas. So that's awesome. You're probably not going to be able to drive out to your charge up at home and drive out to your destination and get home without ever having to recharge. In most cases, you know, you're going to you're going to you're going to have to recharge. But the beautiful thing is if you're charging somewhere overnight or on the weekend, your campground or hotel where it's included in your lodging or included in your campsite, then you're look you're going to be looking at something around six cents per kilowatt hour. So, in my case, if I'm towing my motorcycle down where I like to go, which is about 230 miles away, 
I can, I can, because it's a light trailer, I'll probably be able to get there with my home charge. I'll probably still have, you know, 20 or 30% of my battery left. And then, and then I'll be at the campsite. I'll be able, I'll leave it plugged in for the weekend. So I'll definitely be able to fully charge. It'll be plugged in for probably 30 to 40 hours. So I'll be able to have my full charge. Then I'll be able to come back and that's free. So my total cost per kilowatt hour is going to be about six cents. So that means in my current situation, it's actually worse with my wife's truck. This is a this is much more efficient. The EcoBoost, my wife has a Tundra. This is probably another, she gets like 17 miles per gallon highway. So we're looking, it costs me about 75 bucks to drive down and come back another 75 bucks so about 150 dollars that's going to go to 20. here's the thing people are going to be willing to tow more because of the cost especially in this 160 to 240 mile range when they're going somewhere recreationally where they're going to be able to plug in as part of their campground fee i think this is so underestimated I would go down to Arkansas more if I if it didn't cost me $150 per trip. If it cost me $22, I would go more. I would use it more. The reason the Cybertruck is going to be a towing god, it's not just that it's going to be able to tow. It's not just that it's going to be more comfortable to tow, more enjoyable to tow. It's not just going to be that it's going to have enough range for most people to tow. It's that it's going to dramatically lower the cost of towing. And as a side bonus, I don't have to go gas up when I leave. I just leave fully charged in my Cybertruck. So, okay, guys. So we've gone through it. We've looked at the pros and cons of towing with a Cybertruck, we've applied it to some real world circumstances. And the end question is, is this an Achilles heel? And I would say, no, it's not an Achilles heel. It's more like a, uh, I will say it's more like having a supermodel for a, uh... so we've gone through the data and the question is, is this a fatal flaw for the Cybertruck? And my answer is no. A lot of people have used this term called the Achilles heel, which is sort of a fatal flaw or some key area of vulnerability for the Cybertruck that's going to prevent it from being able to be used as a truck. And you can see, in my opinion, for 80% of the cases, that's just not the way it is. And one thing we didn't talk about was, man, maybe I should talk about that. No, I think I do need to talk about that. Okay. I think I'll... Okay. Okay, guys. So we've gone through the data. We've looked at the actual math. We've looked at real-world cases. And then we've addressed one of the things that everyone seems to ignore, which is what's the cost differential going to be? And how does that play into our decision? So my... My take, there's a lot of people that have used this idea that this is, you know, the, the that uh, TFL video is calling this the fatal flaw or the Achilles heel. And I don't think that's it at all. If you want a more appropriate analogy, this is what I think it is. I think it's like you're looking for a life mate and you meet somebody and they are an, a 10. They're a 10. They're they're. They meet, you know, they're beautiful or they're gorgeous or handsome, whatever. Most of you are guys, so we'll just say it's a 10 girl, supermodel, gorgeous, smart personality, everything that you could ever want in a spouse, uh, in a life partner, but she's extremely nearsighted. And a few times a year, she has to take out her contacts and she has to wear these really these really ugly bottle, bottle, what do they call it? Bottle cap, bottle, bottle glass, bottle glass lenses. She has to wear these really ugly bottle glass lenses for a day. That's it. That's what you're getting. You're getting a 10. 
You're getting a nearsighted 10. That's what this is. Or a unicorn that sheds. Or, or you're told that you have the powers of Superman, but you're not allowed to play contact sports because otherwise you'd kill everyone. It's, it's, it's not an Achilles heel. It's not a fatal flaw. It's something that you have to manage around and you have to be willing to make the trade-offs that are necessary for the compromises that you have to make. But you're getting a vehicle that can do so many things that no other truck can do and occasionally you might have to spend a little longer in charging your vehicle or stop a little more often to to uh, charge your vehicle if you're on a long trip when you're towing. But again, based on my perspective, that represents, that puts you in the 20% category. So if you're prepared to deal with a little inconvenience occasionally, if you're prepared for your supermodel girlfriend to occasionally wear bottle glass glasses, it's such a dumb comparison. This truck is so magnificent in so many ways. And again, if you really want to tow, seriously, get the tri-motor. Don't, don't, don't say if you really want to tow long distance, get the tri-motor. It's going to be a big pain in the butt. If you're going to regularly go on trips of more than 200 miles, 180 miles, when you're towing something, then just get the tri-motor or wait or get the dual motor and when you need it for longer, rent a truck. You can rent a truck for like a hundred bucks a day. It's definitely not a fatal flaw. It's definitely not an Achilles heel. The, the cyber truck will be a towing God. It will give people more value, more comfort, more enjoyment when towing than traditional trucks do. It will be extremely affordable compared to all the other options out there when it comes to towing. And it will be way more comfortable on trips. Okay, guys, thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you next time. I am I am thinking about doing the uh, starting the off-road series, but remember when I do the off-road series, I'll probably... I probably have some gaps in there and I am thinking of a couple of other videos right now that I might do ahead of it. So, but the off-road series is probably going to be like eight or 10 or 12 videos long. So I'm not going to do them all in a row. I'll probably break them up. Um, I'll probably break them up by segment, different, what different off-road type driving purposes. So anyway, please subscribe and hit the bell button. Those are the things that are most essential to help me keep the channel growing. I would really appreciate it. Thanks and goodbye and we'll see you next time.